waiting patiently for the time between to be gone. Go home to the forest where the air smells like home. Gonna sink your hand deep into the earth where the seed you And then there would be a community left there afterwards. What about 
and um, all things are going quite well until the seller is having his common scattered and uh, started this big political campaign. The result of it, the Australian Union of Students saying, well look, we can't buy the land and it was a great problem. And then a fellow called um, uh, um, Paul James, an architect from Sydney Uni, came up with the idea that if we can't buy the land, why don't we recycle the town? And uh, so we found in that was a, a dead town, we bought the RSL Club, which is now the Burton Beyond building, so $500. Um, we bought the Rainbow Cafe, which I'm totally proud of the owners, cost us all of $1,000. And we bought the what's now the Hemp Embassy, which was then the town's general store, also for $1,000. So the whole place was very cheap and very depressed and very empty. And then we found this 1,040 acres out here at uh, Tungle Falls, the Sam Mackay owned and offered to sell it to us for $100 an acre. And so uh, during the festival we called a big meeting to say, after them, what, you know, let's, let's all get together and throw in our money and, and buy this land and start a community of our dreams. And, uh, and so we, we could look at the, at the festival, there were hundreds of people that said, yeah, we're going to come and do this. Anyway, at the point in time when everybody turned up, we didn't have enough money to raise to, uh, to, to make a deposit. So we had to figure out how we could do it. And, and that's where it all sort of got very interesting. Because at that stage, there'd been a different council situation now. The council was Terrania Shire, and Midland was the capital. And, uh, and they were mainly old farmers who saw that we were breathing you know, new life into the area. And so they agreed um, to give us a chance, and we then played a little bit of trickery. Um, we needed to have a body that, that could actually own the land and, and be a, a, a group that we wanted. But there were no laws in those days that allowed people to own land together. In fact, you know, it was quite, quite the opposite. People were, were, were forbidden, people of unrelated blood were forbidden to own land together. And so we were really faced with a difficult situation. But we realised that farmers had things like butter factories and things like that that meant that they could own these means of production and marketing and distribution collectively. And so we went to the Registrar of Co-ops saying, well, we're farmers of the soul, you know, we're spiritual people who want to get back to the land and we want to farm in new and different ways, but we want to own the land together. And if you allow people to own Butter factories, you know, farmers can own butter factories. Well, why not the means of production, the land itself? And the Registrar of Cooperatives, for the first time in its history, gave us the right to actually own the, the land as a co op. We then took that to Terania Shire, who said, Well, farmers have got, you know, this sounds all very proper, so yes, we'll let it happen. So that was how it happened, and uh, we then agreed that uh, we needed to find a way to, to raise the money, so we, we sold shares. And the idea was um, the land was $100 an acre, and um, wages in those days were about $100 a week. And you could think of cow to the acre, so we thought we could probably have a person to two acres. So we used some late formula and came up with the idea of $200 a share, which became the cheapest land deal in history. So we started off selling those, those, those shares, and what's arisen from that is really quite remarkable because we did raise the money, and we're all here 35 years later, but as a result of us being here, um, there's, there's now people all over this state who are entitled to live in such communities, and there's a law that allows that to happen. And there was a long battle to do that because when, when Terrania Shire got amalgamated with Lismore Council, Lismore Council decided to get rid of all the hippies. So they were going to bulldoze all their houses and uh, get rid of us. So it was our first big battle, the right to be here. And it went on through the courts and through, through politics for about five years until eventually an, an amazing day in Lismore, the Minister for Lands came and said that because of what happened at Tunnel, because of the precedent that was set here, um, uh, they had decided to adopt the law of public occupancy for the whole of the state. So it was a truly remarkable uh, achievement on our part. It was the first time in the history of our democracy that, that we had found a device where we could own the land together. We didn't have that for Birth and Beyond Building. We only had our community agreement. And so the only device we had when we bought the Birth and Beyond Building was um, what's called tenancy.
friends in common. And that seems to have come back and bitten us on the bum now. Uh, that was where individual people had to actually become defined as the owners. And, and the agreement we had was a bit for the benefit of the community. But I believe those few owners now see that $100 that they put in 35 years ago is now worth maybe $100,000. So it's a bit hard for them to do that. But we've, we've made great changes in our, in, our, in our history of this area, great changes in the history of, um, of our country, because there's now a whole bunch of other laws, like community title, that were developed because of what Tunnable had, had, had created and achieved. And, and it truly is, I think we all owe each other a great big pat on the back for having achieved something remarkable, because in human history, it hasn't really been so successful before. And, and, and there have been attempts before. In fact, in the 1890s, Australia led the world in, in socialist democracies. We were the first people to give women the vote, we were the first Labour Party, the first union, the first truly sort of people-powered um, uh, government. And uh, there was a, an attempt in the 1890s called the New Australia Movement to start a socialist democratic, democratic socialist unity. And um, instead of doing it in Australia, they did it in Paraguay. And uh, there was a fellow called William Lane, who was a great uh, visionary and uh, writer. And he had brought together a, a, a big community of people, mainly men, young men, who were off on an adventure. And the Paraguay had offered them a whole lot of land where they could start a community. So they all went over there, and on the way, William Lane became more and more dictatorial and started to tell all these young men what they should do and couldn't do and had to do. And then by the time they got there, uh, the rules were getting really, really quite dramatic. And the biggest rule that was the problem for them was no fraternising with the local population. Now it's interesting because the local population were Indians and there were a lot of very beautiful women amongst them. And unfortunately the young Australian men that, uh, that got over there probably very much like young Australian men of all time. And they jumped the fence to go and visit these women, and uh, well, in no time at all, they all fell apart. But I think that community lasted a couple of years. So to see us last 35 years and still be growing beautiful children and still doing sort of wonderful things is a great achievement that we can all be proud of in, in human history. And I won't go on too long, but there is one other thing I did want to say that um, as a salesman, uh, it, it, it was a very interesting pathway. Um, I left uh, Hinden at first with a guitar and a, and a film and uh, hitchhiked around to go to universities and just sell whatever, wherever shares we could. And eventually met a minister who had the church in Paddington and told him what I was doing and all the rest of that. Well, he opened up his doors and literally gave me his church to live in. And we made that a centre where we sold, the hell, most of the shares that we sold, we sold from that centre. And then we started the markets there, the Paddington Markets. And the idea of the Paddington Markets was that um, it was going to be the outlet for all the produce that we are going to grow in the community. You know, we had these big ideas of Tumble where we become a great food producing, exporting, you know, craft and wonderful stuff. And so we, we, we created this, this Sydney market to be the big outlet for it. Well, I think we had a few stores there in the early days. We sold a bit of honey and a few things like that. But um, we, never, we never achieved that dream, but the dream itself went on and, uh, and survived very well. And, and just the last thing I want to say about it is, is, is when I was selling, we, we held a lot of meetings and people would uh, you know, talk about the dream, how we're going to build communities, how we're going to do this and that. And there'd be a lot of questions and a lot of doubts. And there were two main objections that I got everywhere I went. And, and they were, one, you can't trust human beings with, with freedom. You can't trust human beings to live responsibly on the land. That, that what we would do would be pollute the creek and turn the place into a, a, a real mess. And uh, the other objection was that if we were to take our children and live out in remote, you know, regional places and we'd even breathe, and we'd end up with, um, with half-wits and, uh, and, 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 and things like that. Those were the two big objections, and, and as an old man, I have to say, I, I feel very happy, although it was the cheapest land deal in, in, in the world, in history, I, I'm also very proud that it had a lot of quality to it, because um, on those two points, um, as a result of the strength of the Tumble community, we rescued the rainforest for the first time in history. 
we've, we've now created this beautiful food forest and we've protected thousands and thousands and thousands of acres of forest all around us. And, and that's a remarkable achievement. But it's also influenced the laws of the land for that for other people as well. And the other thing, of course, is the big test is the fruit of our, our community. And that's the children. And we now have children who are in their 30s and 40s. And, um, and, and line them all up and, and they're great people. You know, the people that have come out of this community and, and, and this area, they've gone out into the world, are, are doing truly remarkable things and making great contributions to the world. And, and what I find, I've got a couple of kids myself who are doing really well, one in, in London and another in China. But um, they tell me that they stay in touch with the people they grew up with and they feel a strong family connection. And, and that's the biggest and the best thing that we can hope for. We come from a world that's very alienated. We come from a world that, that has gotten more and more distant from each other. And yet we've clung to some dream, some hope, some whatever it is that's brought us into a sense of community that's the most important um, thing that the world needs right now. And so living the dream here, being in our happiness here, we're doing something great for ourselves, for our children, for our families, but we're also doing something great for the world. So I really want to thank every one of you. And uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. The Forest Action Group, when we realised that this forest was being decimated and, and clear fell, um, we had a meeting in 1976 uh, to see what we could do and I've just written this song and uh, proposed that we make a little film and at this really remote meeting up in the valley in uh, Tomania uh, after I sang the song and, and had the story somebody got up and said I'm a producer another fellow got up and said I'm a cameraman and somebody else said look I've got all the 16 millimeter film in my fridge so in the space of my meeting with no money but a lot of good will we uh, put together this little project so that little film became the first First action of the Tarangia Forest Action Group in 1976. And of course the battle for Tarangia was 79 and the great result um, in, in 1982 up at Mount Nagy was when the government decided to declare a, rain, a no rainforest logging policy for the whole of our state. Directly because of our action. So thanks again. Oh. Uh -huh. 